Thank you for joining. My name is Eric Dean. I am the field CTO for CPAC, and I'm joined with Ron Deveau, our CTO. And today we're going to talk about a very interesting uh, uh, thing that's coming up more and more uh, with enterprises, which is AI factories are moving into the enterprise. So traditionally, a lot of these workloads have been done in very large data centers that are, you know, have thousands and thousands of GPUs that have run very, very high speed networks, 400 at the core, 800 potentially. And so as these training models mature, we're seeing the agentic processes push a lot of that workload demand to inference on the edge or into the enterprise. And so this is probably a problem that no one's really yelling out yet, but this is a problem that's coming. This is, this is something that we're seeing. And so Ron's actually gonna walk you through a specific use case that really highlights where the, getting the metrics and the observability connected to inference-based architectures is essential. But it's also important that NVIDIA has been talking about this. They wrote a really great blog about AI factories. If you haven't read it, it's really important. But we know that this is coming. We know that uh, you, know, you have to move the agents closer and closer to the customer, closer and closer, closer to the data. And there's a lot of examples for that. And so as these enterprises shift that workload away from the large training uh, workloads to these ag agentic inference models, these problems are gonna become more and more prevalent. So Ron? Sure. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I think this slide, just to, to emphasize what we're saying today in, in the market. Actually, this section will be a little different than the others. Uh, the others, what we try to do is to show kind of what customers are using today and what's coming in the next 12 to, uh, uh, sorry, 6 to 12 months, right? So the things that we're ready to release around MCPs. This one is a little different in the sense that uh, no demos, it's gonna be all me talking. <laughs> and uh, it's more about what we're seeing today happening in the market with our partners, uh, with our leading customers, and what we expect the next set of problems uh, is gonna be. So again, if we talked before about AI for network observability, this section is all about network observability for AI, right? And the, the difference really that I want to focus on is this AI factory, and, and the big difference is that when you do training, uh, there is a lot of literature already written around it, and it's really huge, very elephant flows, very low entropy that runs for weeks and months uh, in the same way. And they generated a very specific set of problems that people are dealing with them. For the most part, they're being managed by the top four, top five companies in the world with a lot of tools that they already have. As we talk about AI factories, that goes to our, our ICP, right? Our ideal customer profile, which is much more of an enterprise uh, that can that has a data center, can do things on its own, has some other considerations uh, that uh, are not just training. And then, the, when, and then when you start talking to vendors, partners, academia, there is very little understanding of how inference is going to look like. How is it looking now today, right? Because most of the traffic is still around training. But when you go forward, if you listen to Jensen in the keynotes, it's you know all about going to be all about inference. But when you start tr trying to dig in and say what is inference, there are very few answers, right? How does it going to impact the network? What does it actually going to look like? So what I wanted to do in this session is talk a little bit about what we are seeing and how why we think observability is relevant in the context of observability, why we think we need packets. And if you need packets, why the metrics that we can generate from C packet are going to be relevant. So the, a lot of that is just gonna be talking about what is inference, right? So if you think about inference at a very high level, you are talking about AI clusters and, and we want AI inference, they always, you know, there can be some level of training, but in general, let's, let's assume that most of the workflow here is gonna be inference. And you're seeing uh, two very big categories. One is uh, the interaction with the user or the agent. As you saw, the MCP agents are, uh, the agents are generating more and more traffic. Uh, they're gonna have a, a very different pattern than users. Users work from eight to five for the most part. Agents can do all their work at night. Uh, but from a network perspective, it's still gonna look like a query and a response. And many of the queries and the responses will become a session. And at the same time, uh, one of the biggest questions that uh, the designers of these clusters have today 
is what should be their policy of managing the KV cash, right? The KV cash right now is a magic pill of uh, uh, accelerating many things. But if you decide to evacuate it to the external storage, it, it can cause too soon, it can cause a big hit on your performance. And, and one more word, the performance really, if I go back here, is, is really the challenge, the technical challenge that people have is they want to maximize the GPU utilization, right? GPUs are very expensive, but there is also SLA or SLO for latency because I can maximize to 100% by generating a very low latency, right? I can have one GPU, do everything on the GPU, the GPU will be 100% of the time busy, but everybody's gonna wait, right? So how do I balance this equation is really that technical challenge that people have. So what we've done again with, you know, with our setups and, and working with partners is trying and break down, and, and I don't want to go through all the different levels, but break down the um, different workflows that generate, that we know of today, right? Tomorrow it's gonna be a little different, I'm sure, but the, the ones that we know today are between users and agents. And how do they impact, how are they gonna look at when I, when I view them from the network perspective? Right, so the four one, the U1, U2, U3 are users, A1, A2, A3, A4 uh, are agents. And, and you can see the ones that, you know, uh, hopefully people are familiar with, right? The prompt response is really uh, the typical one. Tell me something about the book. Uh, streaming is a little more efficient in the way that they can receive the answer. Uh, and then, you know, media, media generation, right? When I want to generate a, a, an image. Uh, and then we started seeing some of these automatic agents, right? Some of these agents, right? Just in the rest of the demos. And they can generate a very different pattern, right? Because the user can, like what I did, as a relatively short answer, <laughs> short question. But for it to answer, it had to go to the database, bring up a ton of data, send a ton of data up to be analyzed, a short response. So all these ratios, are gonna be very different when I look at the south-north, the, the, the switch that is accessing the, the cluster, uh, both in um, distribution as well as in size. And at the same time, the KV cache is also gonna be different, right? So the traffic that I'm gonna see there going back and forth to the storage is gonna be different based on the use case. So what you want, well, we'll talk about what we want to do, but this is a, a statement that says, you know, as you think about um, inference and inference being the dominant factor of, of your network, of your uh, investment in, in GPUs, in capital, uh, you, you need to take it into account. And, and the reason that you want to have an observability is, is, is this is the way to improve what you have, right? Without, if you, if you don't have that, you're gonna fly blind, right? So you want to make sure that you configure your network correctly. You, you want to understand how your KV cache so there are a lot of things that you want to understand based on how in reality your network behaves and in real time. So again, we'll just, just repeat the picture. So we are talking really about the front end or it's called north-south. This is the switch that connects the cluster to the rest of the network. Uh, down below there is what they call uh, east-west or backend, very high speed networks. Uh, for the most part, Rocky or, or uh, InfiniBand, we're not really dealing with that problem, right? The idea that we are talking about is adding the monitoring points to the north-south. And to repeat the theme that we had before, there is other data that is gonna come in, right? There is a lot of GPU telemetry that is coming in. The switches today generate telemetry. The storage is gonna change uh, telemetry. So the question is, why do I need also packet information? And these are some of the reasons. And again, I'm not gonna go one by one, but being able to monitor the actual latency between the storage and the, and the um, around the, around the uh, south, uh, south, uh, the north-south uh, switch uh, will give you a real hop by hop latency. Inside the switch, they know how much time the packet spent in the switch, but it's very hard to pinpoint where the latency generated by the cluster, was the latency generated by the switch, was the latency generated by the storage, right? So if you really want to understand where in which hop the latency was, uh, was created, you want that. Microbursts, uh, these uh, um, 
for different reasons, you can misconfigure your, uh, your network and create a lot of incast. So it, if you have the packet drops because of uh, microbursts, it would be hard to, to identify uh, inside the switch and the ability to put things together as a session level, right? So again, switches are able to see packets. Uh, the uh, GPUs can tell you something about the application. But if you also want to understand the session, this is where packets are relevant. The nickel many to one, isn't that on the back end network primarily less so than the front end network? Yeah. So that, yeah. It might be, yeah. yeah. There's examples of why we see bursts today. Okay. Yep, um, totally. <clears throat> And nickel is also, well. Yeah, yeah, primarily, yeah, sure. So this is the type of information. Now it's interesting, so what I did, what we, the reason I generated this, and if you notice, these are not actually Grafana. Uh, these are, were generated by uh, an LLM, is because Grafana, so, so even though we have the data, it's actually Grafana is not very good to visualize it. So this is example, another example where you can play, uh, it's another tool for you to use. So the things that you really want to understand is out of all these eight use cases, and, and I'm sure that by the time in the next 18 months, there will be 16 of these, which one is the dominant, right? Which one is sending the most data? How many types you have that? And, and there are characteristics of these, right? One of the characteristics I, I pointed out is the, the, or the ratio of ingress to egress, right? So being able to print out the histograms of these sessions, uh, based on the ratio of data coming in, data coming out, uh, and size will allow you to say, okay, here's how many I have of each. Given that I know how many I have of each, you can say, okay, this is the right configuration for me to optimize, right? Uh, you see, definition, and this was the, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Do you see augmenting that with the actual query type as well? Because now coming in, even with MCP, you have no idea was an agent or was a human or the type of query. Do you see like breaking that down as well? Or? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Some of that will come from the GPU, right? So some of that I will know from how many types of this job had, right? So some of that is in the application. Mm -hmm. Some of that you want to know how, because it can tell you, okay, over the last 24 hours, I had this eight of these and eight of that but how did they distribute over time will be a little harder, right? As in over time in, in, a, in, a, in a low resolution, right. So if, right? Where did they all come? Because there is, once a job is landing in the GPU, he may start bringing in data. Right, right. From the, from the storage. But the right. GPU tags it, you know, sort of source IP or whatever source mm -hmm. port, and then you augment that with the network mm -hmm. patterns, then you can see the, that that's the hope, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we totally see a huge amount of information coming from the telemetry, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and then the other one is just to understand the RTT, right? Again, one of the critical things as you go to uh, inference is, is the latency or is the uh, whatever SLA you have for, you know, is it P99 or the time for top first token, time for the last token, uh, all this information is, is critical, right? So basically see the GPU utilization will come from the cluster, right. compare it to the latency between tokens, the latency uh, of the sessions themselves. Yeah, so this is essentially just double click about that, right? You want to understand how you classify the flows from the histogram that may impact how you define priority. So these are all just examples, right? So you may want to prioritize zero, priority one, right? The different uh, things that you want to play with them and, and probably different uh, uh, specific users will do different things. And then you go to uh, what are the things. So today there is huge amount of parameters that people just use don't know how to use or don't use, and uh, it's just gonna grow, right? If you read uh, the Lama, uh, whatever, 70, uh, or a uh, very long page, they said, well, we were trying to uh, optimize the ECN. At the end, we said the default is good enough, right? After running a lot of experience, or it's not worse than anything else. So, and, and, and without a lot of data, it's very hard to do that, right? So that's essentially the idea. Great, excellent. Everything you wanted to know about inference networking, right? It's this, like I said, it's uh, it's coming. Um, I think this is going to become more and more uh, important. And as network leaders, this is something that we need to be thinking about proactively. Um, so when you're thinking about if you're an enterprise and you're making very large investments in inference at the edge and putting this these new GPU workloads into closer to the users, closer to the workloads, we need observability. And we'd like to say we need CPACket analysis doing some of that work as well. 
So that's really important. And it is a relationship between the, the GPU, CPU activity with the storage, which is essential. The other thing is, is that we know there's different types of data. And so this is going to come from, and we've broken that down into ag agentic or user-based, and I think that's also really important to understand is how do we characterize that data, how do we contextualize that data, and how do we integrate that into the dashboards. And I think this is actually you know, the evolution of a network engineer. Uh, an AI network engineer needs to understand these workflows. Uh, and so when the boss says, hey, and we've seen from NVIDIA, the cost per minute can be in the thousands or you know, in some cases, tens of thousands of downtime. So the, the, the investment costs are there. Now we need to make sure the observability and the responsiveness of the team is, is there with matching that same level of investment. So it's continuous tuning, it's optimizing the workflow, it's ad identifying those baselines, it's looking for the, uh, the different hop-to-hop -hop characteristics, and it's also integrating it into uh, your daily processes. Okay, so getting to the conclusion, uh, thank you so much for your time today. It's been awesome. Um, thank you for bearing with our different demos and the slight delay um, in, in, the, in the morning. But well, we want to call out four key things as takeaways from the session with CPACET today. The first one is that AI is here, but it is not the only solution. It is part of the solution. It is an enhancement. It is an augmentation. It helps the human in the loop. But the best way to sell that is it helps uh, with, with the outcome. How do we tie that back to the business need? And then do we have the insights coming from the, the network at the packet level rolling up to the observability metrics tied to the individual workflow that gives us the ability to solve the problem faster? And that is absolutely foundational moving forward, particularly as networks speed up. All right. And then, you know, from our perspective, it's not just a single uh, tool. It's not just a single technology. It's not just having a next generation packet broker or a next generation packet capture or having analysts on top. It's all of it. It's all integrated. It's all open. It's all infused with different things like MCP and LLMs. It's you need to have this in order to do the speed, the scale to provide that insight. And lastly, let's start with the business problem, right? That's really the core of what we talked about with the customer journey is how we engage with the customer. We don't start with deep protocol analysis. We start with what are your business challenges and how can we help you move that forward and how can we prove to your boss uh, this is actually gonna be meaningful. So if you were to take something out of our session, the, the key thing to, to start asking is the what. You know, what is the challenge that, struggle, that you're struggling with? Um, what's driving the business nuts? Um, you know, what are the top networking issues that we can help apply and what are the metrics that we need to uh, provide to help solve that problem? And then we can engage together and we'll work through the how.